I got another 3D printer from my sponsor Gearbest. It's the Anycubic i3 Mega, an extremely sturdy machine. The frame is made of 1.5mm steel panels by what this is clearly the heaviest and most rigid 3D printer in my workshop. The maximum print volume is 20 times 20 times 20 centimeters, more than enough for most applications. The print bed has an insulation layer at the bottom side... ...by what the plate can get heated up to 100 degrees Celsius. The print bed, moving along the Y axis... ...as well as the extruder that moves along the X axis are guided by linear steel ball bearings. The i3 Mega has a Bowden extruder, by what the heavy extruder motor is moving only along the vertical axis with low speed. The printer ships nearly assembled. To make it work, all you have to do is screwing the frame on the base of the printer... ...and you must plug in the cables coming from the hot end, the extruder and the two Z motors. Before turning on the printer for the first time, you must dial the accordant input voltage, it's 220 volts AC here in Germany. When turning the printer on... ...the firmware boots and a message box pops up saying there is no filament inserted. The filament has to be inserted into a sensor box with a mechanical switch inside. That sensor is clipped on the socket of the filament holder. Next thing to be done is leveling the printer, that procedure starts by lowering the four corner points of the build plate by turning the knurled nuts. Same as all i3 clones, the Z-axis of the Anycubic Mega is driven by two stepper motors through spindles. While the motors are disabled... ...you can turn one of the spindles manually by what the X-axis gets misaligned. After driving the Z-axis to the end switch, you must turn off the motors... ...and adjust the left side of the X-axis to the height of the right end by turning the spindle manually. Last thing to be done is leveling the build plate, which is done through the printer menu. The print head is commanded to the first corner point. Now, raise that corner by turning the knurled nut until you can hear a beep sound triggered by the leveling sensor on the print head. By pressing next on the touchscreen, the print head moves to the second corner of the build plate. In following the steps, all four corner points will get leveled. Repeat that procedure to grant correct leveling of the bed so that the printhead moves in parallel to the surface of the base plate. Thanks to the leveling sensor and the automatic positioning of the printhead, adjusting the printer is very comfortable. You can drive the print head along the edges of the bed to check if the build plate is leveled correctly. If the first layer doesn't stick on the bed or if the nozzle is too tight to the build plate, you can readjust the level sensor.
Loosen the nut with the wrench that is part of the package and turn in the sensor if the gap is too large, turn out the sensor if that gap is too tight. Tighten the nut and rerun the bed leveling. Instead of readjusting the level sensor, you can also turn the screw at the set end switch to get the same result. That screw is a long one that can be turned with a screwdriver from top. After preheating the extruder for PLA... ...you can insert the filament... ...until a strand of plastics exits the nozzle. The i3 Mega ships with 1 kilogram of black filament, however here I am using bronze colored plastics to get a better visibility for the video sequences. Now the printer is prepared for a first job. As usually I'm starting with the file that is on the SD card that came with the printer which grants correct print parameters for the first test run. As soon as the extruder reaches 200 degrees Celsius, the printer starts the job. Two objects are printed layer by layer. The layer height is set to 0.2mm and the heated print bed is turned off because the two sculptures have only a small base area. As the name of the file tells, two holes are created by the printer. There is not much oozing, there are just some very thin fibers between both holes. After approximately one hour, the job is done. The holes are no more than 49mm in height. Considering the small dimensions of the sculptures, all details are clearly visible. There is nothing but the G-code file on the SD card, thus I can't say how perfectly the print meets the CAD model. Furthermore, without the raw data you only have limited possibilities to adjust the print parameters to get better results. The sculpture printed as a second test run is based on an STL file, by what you can adjust all parameters in your slicing software. It's 3D Benchy, a common filament printer test that is freely available on the internet, many thanks to the author of the CAD model. The layer height is set to 0.2mm, the extruder temperature to 190 degrees Celsius. Only a couple of thin springs are visible in the window of the tiny boat. The print job is finished after approximately 100 minutes. The tiny boat is 60mm long, 31mm wide and 48mm high. All details are clearly visible, the edges of the boat bridge are straight. More experiments with the printing parameters are needed to improve the result. You can get high resolution photos of this print on my pages. The next print is definitely more useful, creating sculptures is what my projects need rarely. As demonstrated at the beginning of the video, the i3 Mecha has a filament sensor. If the end of the filament is reached... ...the 
you can hear a signal sound and the printhead moves up a couple of millimeters. Now you can insert new filament. Remove the plastics that came out of the nozzle with the tweezers... ...and cut off the strand at the surface of your print. By pressing continue on the touchscreen, the printer carries on with the job. I did not get the last piece of excess plastics with the tweezers. However, the tiny strand is smudged on the surface of the print with no visible distortions at the final object. After more than one hour, the warm wheel is finished. The printer can also continue with its job after a power outage. Note that plastics exits the hot extruder nozzle even after the power was cut off, which is why the printhead sticks on the surface when the plastics cools down. Loosen the extruder nozzle carefully before continuing with the print job. You can move the printhead along the X and Y axis while the machine is powered off. It's also a good idea to cut off the bump at the top surface of your print. You can continue with the print job as soon as the input power is re-established. After heating up the print bed, the i3 Mecha moves all access to the end switches and the extruder gets heated up too. Not before the extruder temperature is reached, the printer continues the job. Here I turned off the machine while printing an outer parameter, which is the most unwanted moment for a power outage. As a result, there is a node on the surface that has to be grinded later. Even with the two brakes while printing this warm drive, it still works fine. Three D printers are great machines for prototyping. Here I am printing linear bearings and connectors for square tubes that will become part of a new CNC machine. You can quickly iterate the design by changing software parameters to adopt the paths for a variety of machines. Three D printers shorten the path from drawing board to working prototypes. The mechanics of the Anycubic i3 Mecha is extremely rigid. With the steel frame, the machine doesn't bend under load. The touchscreen with the smart firmware makes controlling and setting up the printer a very simple task. The distance sensor speeds up the leveling procedure. Especially the filament sensor, but also the possibility to continue printing after a power outage will save your day every now and then. Altogether, the i3 Mecha is a great 3D printer and definitely worth buying. If you'd like to get an impression of the print quality, you can have a look at the full resolution images of the sample prints on the project page. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!